this is, uh, we know this is right during the middle of the business everyone's here to do. So we really appreciate everybody taking time out from the busy market schedule to be here. So thanks for being here. Three years ago, the Maloof Foundation established a threefold focus. Fight child sex trafficking and exploitation, provide comfort and care for abuse victims, and support children and families in need. It's working, all right. To fight child sex trafficking, we launched the OnWatch training. For those of you who aren't familiar with the training, it's an online digital training that teaches people the signs of human trafficking and what you can actually do if you were to see some of those signs. It's been hugely successful. We've had people across the country, uh, individuals, retail partners, and companies really adopt the cause, and we're really grateful for everybody's participation there. We really want to keep the momentum going, and today we're going to launch a new program. It's a new initiative that aligns with our second primary focus, providing comfort and care for abuse victims. So we're really excited to launch the Rooms Restored program. We're going to show you a quick video that explains the program. Just a quick disclaimer, the video contains triggering and sensitive material. Child abuse and domestic violence are a few topics mentioned during the film. Trauma is relived through triggers, a sound, an object, anything that reminds someone of a past traumatic event. And triggers have a way of postponing a person's recovery. This is especially true for children who have been abused in their homes, and more specifically, their bedrooms. These children have been violated and no longer feel safe in their personal space. Every time they walk into their bedroom, they're reminded of their abuse experiences because of certain triggers. Anything from the bedding to the furniture to the lighting can be a potential trigger for child abuse survivors. And when exposed to these triggers, they can often be re-traumatized. That's why a change in their environment is so critical to the healing process. At the Maloof Foundation, we're committed to providing care and comfort for abuse victims. And we've developed a nationwide program to deepen that commitment and give you an opportunity to help children in your communities. Rooms Restored is a bedroom makeover program designed to promote hope and healing for child abuse survivors. Our objective is to remove the physical triggers of abuse from the child's bedroom and create a new space that supports the recovery process. As we've explored new initiatives over the years, I've seen firsthand how this type of project can make an impact on children, families, and communities. It makes a difference and you can be the difference for these children who have lost their voice. When you restore a child's bedroom, even with a few simple changes, you are showing your support and your commitment to their recovery. You give them a sense of security, a strong feeling of hope, and that's when true healing happens. We know we can't change a child's experiences, but with your help, 
we can provide a comfortable and safe place for them to heal. We want to offer this service to as many children as possible, and it all starts with you. Thank you. In the video, we heard from child advocate Tara Warner. She's here today, and she's going to talk to us about this program and how we can all create an impact by getting involved. Uh, I'm going to read a little bit about Tara. Tara is the director of Victim Services and Chil the Children's Justice Center for the Cache County Attorney's Office in Logan, Utah. As a crisis victim advocate for more than 25 years, Tara helps children, adults, and families who are experiencing trauma due to criminal activity. She makes sure they understand the legal system and that their voices are heard throughout the criminal justice process. From child abuse and domestic violence to rape and sexual assault, Terrell has worked on a myriad of cases involving victims of crime. Please welcome Terrell to the stage. My name is Terrell Warner, and it's a pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. I typically don't present uh, to people outside of the criminal justice system, but I, so I want to give you a, a trigger warning. I'm going to talk about some ugly things, some horrible things. I'm going to talk about child abuse, specifically child sex abuse. But I'm going to share with you how you, each of you in this room, can make a difference. It's through a new and innovative program called Rooms Restored. For many years, there were no laws protecting children uh, in child abuse cases. In the 1870s in New York, there was a serious case involving a young girl named Mary Ellen Wil Wilson. Mary Ellen was horribly abused by her foster mother. And because there was no organization to help her, attorneys for the American Society of the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals began to fight for her. Think about that. An animal rights organization had to help in a child abuse case. That case caused enough outrage that New York citizens created the New York Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. A hundred years later, literally just a few decades ago, the Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act was passed. What did this act do? It funded programs to, to train people on mandatory reporting laws. It provided protective services, and it helped try to create programs to end child abuse. While there was some assistance to removing a child or to helping a child get into counseling, there was nothing that changed where the crime took place, especially if it took place in a place that the child should be considered the safest place in his or her own bedroom. Today, according to the National Association for Adult Tur Survivors of Child Abuse, there are more than 42 million child abuse survivors in this country. One out of three girls, one out of five boys, are sexually assaulted before they hit their 18th birthday. Those statistics tell us that some of us in this room are victims of child abuse, and some of us know others that are victims of child sex abuse. As one who has worked with thousands of child abuse victims through the course of my career, many children are abused in their own bedrooms. For children who are abused in their homes and their bedrooms, there's nowhere safe for them to go. Nowhere there for them to feel in control in the area around them. Nowhere for them to grieve over a childhood that's lost. I'd like to talk about some of the kids that I've worked with on a nearly 30 year career. First, I'd like to talk about Brandy. Brandy was 10 years old when she went to her fourth grade teacher and told her teacher what was happening late at night when her father would come into her room. She didn't know the outcome, she just really wanted the abuse to stop. 
After her father was arrested, Brandy took a sleeping bag from the hallway closet and chose to sleep in the sleeping bag, never again returning to that bed. She never slept in her bed again. After her father was sentenced to prison, Brandy's mother eventually got rid of the bed, and Brandy never got another bed until she went away to college. I'd like to also share with you about a little boy named Xander. He was four years old. Xander's mom had his room decorated really cute. It was wallpaper I'd never seen before. There were train tracks and, and car tracks so he could drive his cars and his trains on the walls in his bedroom. It was a really cute room. One day, Xander's mom and her best friend went shopping, leaving Xander at home with the best friend's husband. That was not uncommon. They came home a little early, and they found Xander being sexually assaulted by this man. Mom recalls Xander not wanting to go into the bedroom for a couple of months. He was wetting the bed, and he was regressing in his behavior. They eventually, after he refused to go into his bedroom, they eventually had to move, putting a single mom in a really difficult financial burden. Then there was 14-year-old Renee. Her, her brother's best friend came and stayed the night one night, and late one night snuck into her room and brutally raped her, leaving her bloody and bruised. She laid in bed until morning. She was so afraid that if she got up, up, he would come back. She slept in her parents' room for months and months on the floor. And even though the perpetrator was sent to a lockdown facility, she continued to sleep on the floor in her parents' room. She hated going into her bedroom. One of the worst child abuse cases I've ever seen was with a little girl named Holly who was nine years old. She would be tied to her bedpost and raped by her stepfather. Her mother and her stepfather, you see, are deaf, and they couldn't hear her scream. It was her teacher that saw the wrists and, and ankles that had marks and chafing on it, and she reported it. After her stepfather was arrested and went to prison, Holly would scream every time she had to go into her bedroom. Case after the case like this is around the country. Every area, every community has cases just like the ones that I've shared with you. In the criminal justice system, we try to find justice for those victims. Law enforcement officers and child protective services, they investigate. Prosecutors search for justice, and victim advocates like me provide the crisis intervention and basically walk a child through the criminal justice process. Unfortunately, children who are interviewed, who share traumatic and horrible, horrible details, who take the stand in court, many of those kids return home to sleep in the very rooms in which the abuse took place. So how can we fix that? How can we help these children? Rooms Restored is a brand new program, and I'm confident it's going to make a difference. Imagine a child being sexually abused in a bedroom. Everywhere that child looks is going to be a trigger of the abuse. But what if a group of community members comes together to change the bedroom? Changing the bedding, perhaps the artwork on the wall, putting on a, in a carpet, um, changing the furniture around. This simple task could make all the difference in the world to, the to a child abuse victim. Instead of seeing reminders of abuse, that child would see beauty, hope, and peace. When I first thought, heard about restored, Rooms Restored, I remember thinking this could be a catalyst for many of the children I deal with. Remember Renee, the teen girl that refused to go into her bedroom? She's now an adult with children of her own. And I asked her about this idea, and she said it probably would have been a great healing experience for her because she didn't want to go into her bedroom. She said maybe she wouldn't have been suicidal, perhaps she would have made better choices, and perhaps she would have had a higher self-esteem and value of herself. While making over a bedroom won't completely remove all of the trauma that Renee or Holly or Xander um, or anyone else would, would feel, it can help make a powerful statement to that child abuse victim that somebody cares about me and somebody wants me to have something better and they want to help me. You see, in many cases, secondary trauma of nobody helped me or nobody did anything about it can run deeper than the original trauma. So what can you do in your community? Something incredible happens when a community rallies around a child. In every community across the country, there are children's justice centers or child advocacy centers where investigations of child abuse take place. 
You could get involved with Rooms Restored and partner in your own community with local centers to make a, redo a bedroom, to make over a bedroom for a child abuse victim. I would like to challenge each of you in this room on behalf of child abuse victims across the country to pledge to make over one room, just one room. If you find it rewarding and fulfilling, then offer to do another. Perhaps you can partner with other companies. Somebody could supply the carpet, somebody could supply the artwork, somebody else could do the sheets and the bedding, somebody else could do the furniture. And I promise that if you work together in your community and you make the, uh, you'll make a difference in the life of a child, and together we can make a message of hope and send a message of hope to children across the country. You know, research tells us that for child abuse victims, if there's one person or one thing that is positive in a child's life, that child will recover from that traumatic abuse. And so I would challenge each of you to get involved with Rooms Restored. You can contact the Maloof Foundation, and they'll be glad to help you, and make a difference in the life of a child in your community. Thank you. Thank you, Terrell. Thanks for your support and your insights. Terrell's had an amazing, amazing career helping a lot of people. Uh, not too long ago, my wife Casey and I were able to participate in a bedroom uh, remodel in our community. Uh, there was a teenage girl who had been abused in her bedroom, and we were able to partner with uh, some other companies in our community that provided different items. We brought some, some bedding, of course, and it was incredible to see the transformation that took place in the bedroom and the, the impact, as Terrell mentioned, to the individual who, who we were actually able to meet in this, in this scenario. The experience was very eye-opening. And as we really thought about it, it goes without saying the connection that we felt like we, we all could have in making an impact in our own communities. I think uh, when you think uh, for what we did, the, the, the impact was so great. And I think it's something that we could all do and as Terrell mentioned, it's something that exists in all communities um, throughout the country. We've been uh, working on this program for quite a few months and we're excited to officially roll it out. So from here, you all know about how the program works. Again, it's pretty simple. We take all the old out and we put new in. We've all got access and ease, I think, in participating in this. Um, we've also look, looked at it as a mechanism to work within our own organizations. A lot of times when we talk about these things, uh, people ask, how do we get involved? What can I actually do? And this seemed really to fit our industry exactly. So from here, if you're interested, all you have to do is send an email to the foundation. And we've got great people on our side that can connect you with opportunities in your areas, as well as the agencies uh, to work through. And we protect, we, everyone has to get pre-qualified to, uh, you know, to get involved in the program, but everything is protected on the children's side and uh, we can connect you with those. So it's a very easy process. Just contact us at the email address. If you haven't got one of the pamphlets, we have them here at the front desk, and then we've got several people from our foundation here in the blue shirts up here up front if you have questions afterwards. So thank you for coming. Have a good night.